On The Breakfast, the Coalition of United Political Parties raise alarm over alleged moves to use secret court action to stop the use of Beaver's machine in the 2023 general elections and other electoral fraud. Also on the breakfast, officials of the Nigerian Police Force seals the office of League Management Company in Maitama, Abuja. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time where we go through the top trending conversations generating, I mean, different reactions in different spaces. I am Messi Bopo. We start the conversation with a top trending on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Kofi joins as well, uh, but as always, the top for us this morning is that the court has ordered INEC to accept Akpabio as a senatorial candidate. It's a lot of drama right there with the APC, especially in Akwaibom State. Well, uh, the Federal High Court in Abuja has ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, uh, to accept and publish Goswila Pabio's name as the candidate of the All Progressive uh, Congress APC candidate for Akwaibom Northwest District for the 2023 elections. That's a uh, judgment that was given by Emeka Wait uh, on Thursday in Abuja. Now, all of this is that Akpabio, remember that Akpabio had contested the elections, I mean the primaries, the APC primaries, but of course he stepped down for Bola Ahmed Tunibu, uh, the presidential flag bearer. And however, it was also been reported that he, con he also, you know, <laughs> was part of the senatorial elections as a candidate. But the judgment and the judge had said that um, INEC acted illegally by refusing to act and accept and publish Akpabio's name when it was submitted to it by the APC as his candidate. And according to that judgment, that INEC is bound by the provision of Section 29, Subsection 3 of the Electoral Act to publish only the personal particulars of a candidate of the first plaintiff for the Akwaibom North West Senatorial District elections in person of the second plaintiff, that's Akpabio, and has received as was received from the first plaintiff. And so the, uh, it was held that the electoral umpire cannot publish any other name or particulars of any other candidate as the candidate of the APC for Akwaibom Northwest Senatorial District election, except as nominated and submitted and received from the plaintiff. However, INEC was also faulted that it is not because it was said that Akpabio contested an election. And they're saying, INEC is saying, we did not monitor that election. And, you know, the judgment is saying that it is not going to be, you know, the candidate's fault, Akpabio's fault, that INEC, who's saddled with the responsibility of monitoring an election, uh, you know, not living up to our expectation. However, there were, you know, factions. That's what it is. But, you know, it's quite worrisome. I mean, how, how do you even explain all of this, that there was an election that was conducted, INEC was not there, because INEC didn't think that, you know, was there really an election, really? Who can actually attest to it? And if there was an election, why did INEC not monitor that? But you also had another election where INEC monitored and it was sent. And so, you know, so it's, it's a lot of back and forth. Let's not also forget that. It, it's also expected that there's a second, you know, place cut holder and what have you, all of this uh, in the conversation, all of this mix in the conversation. But there's a lot that's going on. It is a judgment or, you know, a declaration from the Federal High Court. So it definitely means that uh, that's not the final. It can also be appealed. I mean, that judgment can be appealed until it gets, you know, to the Supreme Court. But let's see what happens with the interests that are involved. Um, but, but Kofi, what, what do you make of this stance? Goswila Pabi, the uncommon man. <laughs> with uncommon things, because this feels like it's an uncommon judgment um, and declaration. I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a, an interesting test of the resolve of uh, the electoral umpire. And an interesting test of the resolve of the um, judiciary to do the right thing. Um, I know it's, it's, it's very possible to rush to conclusion uh, to uh, judge the judge in this matter. <laughs> I like that. But I think people should also take time to look at the wordings and the letter of the, uh, the judgment. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very important. Um, but we go back to what Anik had said all along. 
I mean, a very enigmatic uh, uh, lawyer, uh, Mike Igini, has been the resident electoral commissioner in INEC, of INEC in Kwaibom uh, State for some time. And Mike Igini has been retired. There was uh, some, some reaction, sort of hula baloo, um, to the retirement of Mike Igini. He came out to say, see, it is statutory. Having served the statutory amount of time I can serve as rec, I have to leave. Um, some thought it was probably not unconnected with Akpabio's, uh, um, Akpabio's um, travails as uh, a candidate in a quiet bomb state. Uh, but Mike Guinea was one of the, um, the people who, or the recs, who have stood, uh, resident electoral commissioners, who have stood their ground um, to not be moved by, by powerful politicians. I mean, the same can be said to be happening in, this is a, uh, this is um, a Kwaibom Northwest Senatorial District. The same can be said to be happening for Yobe North Senatorial District, where uh, Senate uh, President Ahmed Lawan is um, um, en engulfed in a, in a battle for the APC Senatorial ticket with a man who is said to have been a placeholder, Machina. You know what these politicians do? Just go there and be there for us. If we cannot um, get the presidential ticket, we'll come and then you, you step aside and then. Uh, we, we, we move. Now, the Electoral Act is quite clear on how uh, political parties can replace their candidates. It's very clear. First of all, no candidate is prevented from stepping aside. It's not a death sentence that you should, what um, uh, uh, if you win an election, you get a ticket that you must go. You can decide, you know what, I don't want it again. I, I want to go home, or I want to go to my farm, or something, you know. And what happens is that the, the candidate has to inform the party in writing. INEC has a stipulated time. INEC has a schedule of activities for the conduct of, of um, the 2023 elections. And those activities include the primaries of the parties. You have the uh, uh, governorship primaries, you have the um, senatorial primaries, you have the House of Representative primaries, you have the um, State House of Assembly uh, primaries, the so state constituency, federal constituency, senatorial district, and presidential primaries. Now, when a candidate wins an election, he wants to step aside. There's nothing like placeholder in the books, but that's something that has cropped into the uh, political lexicon of Nigeria. When a, a candidate wants to step aside, they have to inform their party in writing. Now, their party will then inform INEC in writing of their intention to conduct a new or fresh primary based on the stepping aside of, of the, uh, the candidate. Of course, INEC would have to be invited to be a part of that. You know, so there are processes. Um, so, for instance, in your base state, you cannot tell the machina that he's no longer the um, the, uh, the 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 candidate for the Yobe North Centurial uh, uh, District elections for APC because he contested the primary and he has indicated in writing that he is not stepping aside. You know that any 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 talk to the effect that he is stepping aside is uh, hogwash. You know, so if he hasn't stepped aside, for instance, in the case of Ahmed Lawan, there is no way that Lawan can be the, the person to, to represent the All Progressives Congress. But, in, but, but if the candidate who emerged, all right, now Kwaibom State, for instance, it was the question we have to ask ourselves is was there uh, a senatorial primary for APC in uh, Akwaibo Northwest? If there was a senatorial primary, who won the primary? All right, then when the, the, the winner emerged, what did the winner do? Did he write a letter officially to his party saying, I step aside? And did the party inform INEC that um, their, their candidate had stepped aside to now conduct a fresh election? Like what happened in the Boeing State? It was quite clear that um, uh, Umayi had his plan well thought out because, of course, they organized a fresh election and he won that fresh election. Though there are questions surrounding it, but this are the situation. This is what needs to be done before you can no, but, have but, a new name. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, that's uh, very considerable. I mean, we're hoping that, you know, those involved would actually look at all of this. But it feels like the argument that's been put out here, especially, you know, the court judgment is as regards INEX saying we were not uh, in, we were not aware of any elections or we didn't monitor the elections. So even name have been sent from the APC, you know, uh, at the end of the year, and they refuse to recognize a certain name that's of a Pabio. They're saying that we're, we're not aware because that's not the name that was sent. The name that was sent is what we know and the elections that we monitored. And so, however, we did not monitor that elections. Now, the court is actually saying that it is your fault that you didn't monitor the election. It is your responsibility to monitor an election. 
So the fact that he didn't monitor an election is not our concern. It brings us back, you know, to all of the hula balwa that happens in the party. So you have, you know, faction, two factions. You have a certain faction. You have another faction. And whose faction should we respect? But really, really, was there an election that, you know, was conducted? Did we have parallel congresses in the APC in Akwaibum, say, especially for that particular seat? Is another question. Because right now, it feels like anyone can wake up and say, hey, there was an election. I contested for an election. And so if INEC did not monitor that seat, it's just, uh, I'm just hoping that someday, somehow, as a democracy, as, as a country, we'll move away from all of this. And we'll get uh, to a yeah. point where we don't have to approach the court, you know, to resolve all of these issues. Because it's you know, quite worrisome. You know, in the Home State, when the All Progressives Congress are having their, um, uh, their con congresses to, to elect um, the officials of the party, you know, uh, I think last year or so, you know, you had, you had parallel congresses state congresses for, in some states, for APC. In, in a private state, you had three. <laughs> you had three congresses. It's three state congresses, you understand. And um, that these three straight state congresses turned up three state party chairmen. <laughs> you know, so, yes, yes. That was, I think that was the state that had the most. Some states, you had two. Uh, the APC is um, a victim of its um, uh, inability to put its house in order. You know, and I mean, the, the trial judge may not be wrong um, in not, but the, the judge, sorry, in this in this suit may not be wrong in saying, well, it was not, it was your fault that he didn't monitor that. But can the judge be the one to say which of the congresses the the INEC should monitor? Because <laughs> if if the party, like you're saying, you know, turns out to have uh, uh, more than one uh, primary, yeah, mm -hmm. a primary. I think the party should tell INEC which primary it recognizes. And if the party says we recognize the primary that turned up the organizers of Aquabio's, uh, the Congress rather, the primary that um, turned up Aquabio as the candidate, then of course um, uh, the party, the, 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 the judge hasn't done anything wrong. But the thing is, at a point, a name should have been submitted to, to INEC. At a point, a form should have been uploaded by the party on INEX portal. You know, but you know, parties should not be allowed to get away with something. So if you go and have three uh, primaries, for instance, which one will be recognized? You have to now say, we are putting this candidate forward as a candidate. We've uploaded the form. Now at a point, you now say, well, we've received a letter from the candidate saying that he or she is withdrawing. So we are going to... Um, are stipulated by the electoral, the electoral act, organize a fresh primary to get. We must have a we must have a candidate. So there, there is definitely going to be a chronology of activities, and that you can trace back to find out what the party had done, right? So that's 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 that for for that. Well, we we have to move on to um to our next story. Of course, um uh, this one um it is quite interesting. Messi the uh, uh <laughs> anyway uh. uh the 2023 presidential polls are uh, around the corner. The elections are around the corner. And, of course, one of the things that you know, Nigerians are not really used to, um, and we've not really gotten it right, probably, I can say, probably, because, you know, it, people don't yet believe these things are polls, you know, polls. Um, for instance, in America, when you watch the U.S. elections, you see the media talking about exit polls. The media organizes exit polls. You know, people who are coming out, they ask you, who did you vote for? When you say who you vote, voted for, they'll write it down, and then they'll be able to have a projection of who's going to win the election. They also have certain polls, like Gallup polls, you know, and some other polls. I remember at some point in, in uh, political history, in this current democratic uh, republic, in this republic, we had the NOI polls. You know, some people would say, Ngozi Konjo, we had the polls. <laughs> you know, we had some other comp um, organizations. Uh, but there's a new one. That has been organized, uh, showing <laughs> um, which of the candidates for the presidential elections will, will, is, is ahead, is leading. And, um, you know, it means that if Nigeria's presidential election was held today, the candidate who this poll says is ahead will win the presidential election. So NOI polls is back with this one. And who is ahead? I uh, wish you could see the result on our screen. Um, but this poll, 
was commissioned by what he called Enup Foundation. The brother is saying Enup Post. No, it's Enup Foundation. And it suggests that the next election will be a presidential uh, horse race between three candidates. Obi, Atiku, and of course, Tinubu. But according to this poll, hmm, <laughs> um, the researchers had not made public the methodology of the poll and how <laughs> uh, the data was sampled. But they say that Mr. Obi will win the election today, if it's held. He garnered a total of 21% no, 21, 21 uh, of voters um, ahead of Ashiwa Jibola Amitinbu, who gathered 13%. And that Tiko Abubakar, who also gathered 13%. Now, Rabi Musa Kwankwaso was a distant fourth with 3% of voters, placing him uh, an outsider in the fourth position. So you have Obi, 21%, um, Bola Metinbu, 13%, Atiko Abubakar, 13%, and Rabi Musa Kwankwaso, 4%. So what they are saying, in our foundation is saying, because they published the polls, is that if the election were to be held today, Peter Obi will be. Nigeria's president. No, no, but uh, I, I think that... smile on your face, Maxi. Not, not necessarily, because, uh, you know, going through the particular statement, they said that he was leading at the time, mm. because there are other very... I mean, there are other factors. For instance, uh, the, the result have showed that about 33% of the respondents were undecided. Another 15% cannot, you know, uh, refuse to disclose who would be president for... So you, so you have undecided, a group of persons were, that were undecided. Now, in their analysis, or at the end of the summary of it, is that uh, you can't really tell because that 33% undecided who they will vote for amongst, you know, this uh, contending forces, it, it, it can actually upturn the result. But at the time, looking at what it was, it felt like he was leading, but that cannot actually, you know, add up. Yeah, I, I, say, I, I, was, that, that, I was about to come to that. Yeah, yes, that, yeah, that, I, can, I, I, that actually, actually cannot add but, up. But the point, the point what, what they are saying, what, what they have put out right now means that if the results, if there's an election today, because, you know, if you're undecided, you probably will not, will not vote. Going by what they have, what they're saying is that the Labour Party candidate is ahead and if we distill those results today as votes in an election, he will win today. No. Uh, I, I mean, looking at the comment that they actually said, because I, I have to follow through it again. First of all, it's, it's okay that if you look at, you know, the methodology, you can't actually say. It, it is just the poll. And it's important that we pay attention to the poll. Like you say, we're not used to it, but that's what research is about. So research would actually help you understand, make decisions, inform decisions. I mean, governments of different countries and of the world depend highly on, you know, research and data that's being gathered at the end of the day to make some informed decision. This is actually, should be a plus for some of those political parties. Right with them, I would say. Uh, not necessarily saying that it will, because like they rightly mentioned that because of other factors, you know, the respondents that they had, um, it's almost impossible to say at the time that, you know, it's possible that he could win because anything can actually happen. But however, it's also possible that he would be leading if that was the case. But let's not forget that. Making, you because that's not a reality. That's not a reality. I mean, it's just a, a random sampling. Like it was rightly stated, if you cannot tell the methodology that was used at the end of the day and the number of persons that were sampled, what area? We're looking about 200, we're looking at, you know, over 200 and something million population. So that alone cannot be it. But for me, I think that apart from the fact that you're saying that some political parties might be, uh, you know, might be leading or a certain political party might be leading, it's important to look at all the issues that they, were, they mentioned. They talked about, um, you know, respondent. You know, they, they mentioned some other factor, undecided voters who prefer not to reveal their identity and all of that. They also talked about the reason why a lot of persons decided to vote. And let's not forget that if you look at, you know, the percentage of registered voters, 99% is in the Northeast, 90% uh, is in the Southwest and the, the North Central and the Northwest respectively. And so the lowest registered voters percentage are in the Southeast with 88% and the Southwest with 85 So uh, if you also look at the statistics that was put out, especially in percentage from this different, you know, ge geographical zones, you can't actually say that that's it. When you compare that with the actual thing that's on board, let's not forget, we really don't know how, um, you know, the kind of sampling so, that was so, done. So, so what, are you, what are you saying in essence? I'm, what I'm, I'm saying is this is not tentative. This is just, you know, a sampling. But however, there are other factors in this research and poll that should 
be, you know, should be considered. For instance, um, they said that the, they also asked people why they were voting. Some people say to tackle insecurity, economy, because they were tired, uh, you know, with some of these issues. And these are issues that, you know, like I would say, if I were some of these political parties, you pay attention to some of these issues and, you know, see yeah, how yeah, they can improve I, 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 Yeah, I, I think the issues are, uh, no, we don't need a poll to, to, to <laughs> Maybe tell. Maybe sometimes uh, yeah, we need no, a poll no, because no, you know, that, if yes, you look at the behavior. Sorry, sorry Messi, I, I think we don't need a poll to to know what issues are of importance to the country. And people know these issues. And the, you know, the, the candidates are already talking about these issues. And Nigerians will really? decide, yes, yes. Nigerians will decide um, you know, who to vote for at the end of the day, with or without a poll. We all know the insecurity is a problem. We know the economy is an issue. You know, we have jobs, you know, education, we know healthcare. These are issues that, you know, when, he, when you walk on the street, you know, you know, you have to be alive, if you're alive in this country. But the, the point is that, um, you know, the, if you talk about methodology, we don't know. Um, they haven't made it public. We don't know if they will make it public. And and when we look at, um, uh, uh, you know, the 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 polls that have been organized around the world, I will mention Gallup, to be precise, you know, to, to, to particular. Um, you know, you, ca you can only question to an extent, and but you have to either accept or reject the, the results of the poll. And that's what the political parties do. You know, if they publish them, they, uh, their methodology, would that affect how people accept it? You understand, would that affect how people reject it? I think that um, those who will accept it will accept it, and those who reject it will reject it. What, what, what I would like to see will be more of these credible organizations, because NOI polls have they've been there for some time, uh, more of these credible organizations coming out to conduct polls as well, to tell us, and then we can see if there is a pattern developing. Um, will, will you ever get it right? You know, will you ever get it right is another question to be asked, you know. Um, in, in research, you talked about, you know, sample size, for instance. So sample size is, is, is critical in, in determining uh, whether, you know, your, your, your methodology is correct. You know, what is the makeup of your sample? Um, do we have agencies that scrutinize or organizations that scrutinize these? No. You know, so I don't know where they're going to go take their... Their, their work to and say this was our methodology. Please scrutinize it to tell well, us. Could, could yeah, we, so, sorry, Messi, to tell us if if it is correct or not. Um, I don't know. I think that no, that that no, would be difficult. We, we have actually talked about mm, that. I, you I know, think so, that so, so the point point I'm making is that um, we can only comment on 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 what they brought out and 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 people will react to it. I expect the political parties to come out and you know either accept or reject it. Um, uh, I don't know if APC has made an official statement about our, our first. Uh, major conversation tonight, this morning. But they, they should come out and tell us what they think about it. Um, and then some have said, you know what, people are saying the Labour Party... No, no, no. So I, yeah. I think that, I think that this report, that, yeah, Kofi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that this report is actually very, uh, to some extent, they, they haven't really, this report has not really said, or this poll or survey has not said that there will be the winner. They just say at the time, looking at it, he will be leading that's what it is. No, no. My, my, I mean, looking at, I, I, looking at all the, of it, I'm, I'm the because they looked, they looked if, at if all the issues as well. Lecture. I didn't say mm. Aina Foundation said he will win. I'm saying that, for me, my understanding of this is that if election were to be conducted, to, and I'm not saying that the result of the poll is, is credible or is correct. I'm saying that their findings, their results, my interpretation is that if an election were conduct, conducted today, all right, Obi will be leading. Uh -huh. Th that's uh -huh. what they said. So, so that, that that is it. But I'm but, not but saying I, I'm not I, I'm not saying I, I this think, is the outcome. Yes, this will be the outcome of that. But election. apart from that, Definitely you know, be, because we're very we're, we're very critical as humans. I mean, it's part of our default setting to be very critical. But I also think that it would be important to look at some of the issues that have been mentioned. Because if you look at the number of persons who say they will not be part of the elections, I mean, when you have people say undecided, I don't, I don't know who to vote for, it can, you know, it can as well be, you know, compared to saying some persons who will not want to turn out to vote. And you know how voter appetite has contributed in crippling the entire process. So it's okay to say that you have over 100 million persons. I mean, this is me just saying, 99%, you know, voters that have actually registered. Will you have 99% come vote on the day of election? These are some of the questions that, mm, yeah. you know, you, you, and you, some you, of the you, things you that need to be that, answered. Yeah. You mentioned the 33% of those, those polled um, said that they, they're not they're yet to be decided. I think that we may not be able to um, say categorically that those um, people who turned out their, their questioners uh, or we responded by saying they were not going to, they, they're not decided yet. It may not be possible to now at this point say they will 
uh, constitute um, uh, uh, voter apathy or apathetic voters. You understand? People may still be trying to figure out who to vote for. Um, they may already know who to vote for. They don't want to let the cat out of no, the No, so, but, but so it, it, uh, it brings me back to the beginning of the conversation where I talked about the fact that, hey, for whatever reason, there's a reason why you have research and you have all of this data gathering and facts finding. And there's always a purpose for it. So whether or not it's anything to go by, it just shows light. It's, you know, it's appointed to some areas that we need to look at. All hands should be on deck. The electoral umpire. But we'll take a break now because we're out of time. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of the National Daily Space. Stay with us.